don't even know if this... Oh, okay, it's working now. Okay. Hello. I only attendance raffle, so I got For what? That's awesome. My kid just won the attendance raffle. So, up yours, suckers. But seriously, um, this probably won't be a very long video, um, because it's on a 600-word essay, um, that H.P. Lovecraft wrote, um, and this is, again, um, the Cthulhu Mythos Thursday, um, episode. Um, you could go to, um, weirdmask.com and read History of the Necronomicon. Like I said, it's 600 words. It's really short. Um, but I don't really want to talk about what it is. I want to talk about why it was. So, the reason why Lovecraft wrote this in the first place was he never intended for this thing to be published. Okay, It was something he had for his own world he made. And um, I know a lot of the writers that watch this channel do this stuff already, but some don't. So I just want to talk about how important this is. He wrote this history of the grimoire that he could look back on and make sure in all the stories that use the Necronomicon, the facts are straight. And um, even so far as to um, present day, when he wrote it, where copies of the Necronomicon are in the world. And how many there are, and stuff like that. So, um, another reason why he wrote this, it wasn't just for him, but because the whole Lovecraft Circle thing, um, with like Robert E. Howard, and Clark Ashton Smith, and um, Robert Block, and Frank Belknap Long, and um, Henry Kuttner, and um, all his homies, you know, like, he sent them copies of this, so if they want to include the Necronomicon in anything they're writing, they had... Um, like the history of it so they couldn't F it up and um, the funniest thing is <laughs> so the thing that cracks me up about this is that it was written in 27 okay and not published until 1938 after his death so if History of the Necronomicon was written in 27 supernatural horror and literature which was um, his like master's thesis um, which is extremely filled with content um, and I, I think when we get to that we'll do a whole thing about that that might be like next year like spend like a year on it but anyway um, so he wrote this in supernatural horror and literature mind you in 1925 and then went back in the summer of 1927 to add something. And you're thinking, what could he have added to supernatural horror and literature? Well, let's go back to history of the Necronomicon. Because again, this was written in 1927. So something happened in 1927 that H.P. Lovecraft had to go back to supernatural horror and literature and church it up a little bit. Let's figure out what that was. Well, the last line of supernatural, no, of the history of the Necronomicon, sorry. Um, I, I would like to read this last line. It was from rumors of this book, speaking of the Necronomicon, of which relatively few of the general public know that Robert W. Chambers is said to have derived the idea of his early novel, The King in Yellow. 
And you might be saying, what's this got to do with the price of tea in China, you know? And it's because Lovecraft in 1927, for the first time, read The King in Yellow. And was fa lord like most people are when they read The King in Yellow. Um, and he had to add it into supernatural horror and literature, obviously. For those of you who are a fan of The King in Yellow, um, the fact that he read it and then was like, oh, damn, that was good. You know what? He probably got the idea for The King in Yellow because of the Necronomicon. Um, so, like, just the whole rewriting of history that Lovecraft does um, completely cracks me up. But, um, back to the hotel here, um, the whole idea of writing a history that you never intend to publish, um, that's just for you, is such a good idea as a writer, um, especially if you have a world you're building or something that is going to transcend into um, different things. Like, it would be great if, like, people at Marvel and DC had something like this. Um, because it seems that they are very forgetful at times, but that's okay. Uh, this history of the Necronomicon is almost like, and I'm sure there was something like this before, but it's also, it just reminds me of, like, a like an early form of a show Bible, which is like, um, if it does, if you have it out now, a show Bible is like if you're making a pilot for TV, like a TV show, um, you send, when you're like pitching it, you have your show Bible. And it kind of gives an outline of where you hope to go with the show, um, like ideas for different seasons and stuff like that. But it also has the rules, like the rules that cannot be broken um, by anyone writing the show. Um, I would love to see the show Bible for Lost. That would be hysterical. But, um, you know, whatever. But anyway, so um, check out the history of the Necronomicon. It is a very historical piece. And, um, uh, let me know down below what you think. If you're a writer and you do have, um, like, show Bibles or things like this for the books you write, um, tell me about them down below. Um, I love hearing new ideas about stuff like that. Um, it's helpful as a writer. It's fun as a reader. 